Hello everyone, my name is Carolyn Weisinger and I'm the board president of San Francisco Pride. This year for Black History Month, we will be honoring Black LGBTQ leaders of the past and the present. These are important members of our family who have shaped our quest for justice and liberation, as well as our siblings who continue to do the work to this day. We could think of no better way to kick off this month than honoring the life of our dearly departed Ken Jones. Ken was a brother, friend, and mentor to all of us in the LGBTQ community. Dubbed the father of diversity, Ken stood along with Harvey Milk, Cleve Jones, and all of the icons who birthed our movement here in San Francisco and the surrounding areas. Quite appropriately, Ken became the first Black president of San Francisco Pride in 1980. We are sad at his passing, but we are honored to be the beneficiaries and torchbearers of the legacy he left. Rest on brother, elder, and now ancestor, Ken Jones. You will never be forgotten. Ken, please tell us what your position was at Pride and what years were you at Pride? Hi, everyone. Good to see you all. I was with Pride in 1980. So I think I have a very different uh, picture of, uh, of this thing that we call Pride. I remember when our annual budget was $286,000. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have a long history. I came on as the co-chair of outreach. The 80, 81, 82 committees were very focused on our role as community builders and community organizers. And so in those 80s, it was very important to us to establish in our bylaws things like parity goals, where we want to have as many women over the age of 40, under the age of 40, with children, without, those differently abled, we wanted to make sure that everyone that made up our community had the opportunity to participate in a open, candid, transparent, and tiring process. But <laughs> what I've learned from that experience is you get out of it what you put into it. And our whole hearts were into it. We didn't have a parade headquarters. We met in each other's homes. We shared the evening meals together. We raised each other's kids together. And so there was a sense of trust and respect that we had for each other that made consensus almost a natural process for us. So I'm gonna go ahead into our first set of questions and I'm gonna ask Ken Jones, you talked about how you were with the organization back in the 80s. And I know that was still some 10 years past when the, the festival first started. But what we know historically what we've been told were the thoughts and the reasons why the, the organization came to be. But what were some of the feelings of the original committees? What were some of your personal reasons why you felt that Pride was something that needed to be continuously celebrated every year? In the 80s in San Francisco, there was a, um, well, this is two years after Harvey Milk had been elected. Things were changing in the city, especially around politics. Um, there, until this moment, the real movers and shakers in our community have been the San Francisco Tavern Guild. They raised the millions of dollars with events uh, to support LGBT. And in the 80s, we kind of challenged that system and said, you know, it's not all about the pretty boys on the stage dancing in the nude. There's a little bit more to our movement. And this was a difficult discussion because everyone likes to see the little boys with nothing dancing. But for us, we had a serious commitment to also make it an educational event. If we're gonna gather people and the whole world is looking at us, let's be sure that we're a barometer of this thing that we call community. Uh, in the 80s, our parade quickly changed at the onset of AIDS. It quickly changed from the party 
to initially it was a kind of a shock and a fear and a panic somewhat of what we're experiencing now with COVID. Um, we were lost, but we marched. Look at all the footage from the aid service organizations and watch our development as a group of people who came together in fear, quickly moved to mobilize themselves, quickly moved to begin to take responsibility for how we experience our here and now and to make sure that we were inclusive of everyone. Amen. Yes. Thank you so much, Ken, which leads me to and we got, let me, I, I don't want to let go of that tavern guild because this was a big fight for us. It was a major change of really the Harvey Milk people and the A gays, the gay establishment who really did not want to see pride survive. Mm. So a part of the passion I feel every time I feel the parade is under attack is we've been through a hell as an organization. We have had some major fights with key players who primary goal in life was to make sure we failed. And through that, we survived. And that's where my real pride kind of kicks in. And it's like, keep going, keep growing, keep relevant and meaningful in this changing world. Make sure that we all have the opportunity to ride that freedom train. Hello, everyone. I'm San Francisco Mayor London Breed. It is with a heavy heart that I join you all today as we mourn the passing of our beloved Ken Jones. Though losing Ken is hard, we know that his life has inspired so many of us in the way he fought for equality and diversity, especially within the LGBT community. He showed us what it means to rise up in the face of adversity with a vision for a better world. And he put his whole heart into making that world a reality, not just for himself, but for so many others who face discrimination just because of the color of their skin or who they loved. Yet Ken never let those challenges bring him down. I ran into Ken quite frequently on Fillmore Street. He always had a smile and something positive to say. I remember how much he loved giving tours of the Castro and educating people on the rich history of the neighborhood. He devoted himself to making our pride celebration the best in the world known for its parties and, of course, our incredible pride parade, but also for its focus on inclusion and diversity. I will deeply miss Ken, but his spirit remains with us. Ken was resilient. He knew that even when progress was made, like when bars finally stopped discriminating against women and people of color because of his protests, or when he helped establish the first 100-mile AIDS bikeathon there was still work to be done. I'm proud of the work Ken did to make San Francisco what it is today, a beacon of hope. We are committed to continuing that work because he gave us hope for a brighter future. Rest in power, Mr. Ken Jones. San Francisco will never forget you. Mm -hmm.